cone done in blending, sorry, a cone uh, cube. And then I'm gonna do a sphere somewhere down here. So again, I'm not a robot. I'm gonna have to lightly sketch my circle until I'm happy with the shape. I feel like I'm okay with that. Now I can darken it. Okay, and I'm gonna choose my light source. I'm gonna stay consistent with these. I'm gonna see the light is coming from this side. So light source and then my shadow would be on the opposite side, but this time my shadow is gonna be kind of rounded. The shadow obviously mimics whatever it is that's casting the shadow, okay? So this one should look kind of triangular. This one can just look straight, like square. This one is gonna be a little bit rounded. It's like when you're walking in the sun on a hot summer day, right? And you look at your shadow on the ground, it's gonna be like an elongated version of you, it's like a stick person shadow, right? So in this case, it's gonna mimic the form. Okay, so now we know the highlight is going to be in this area because the light's coming this way. So I'm going to add a, a medium shadow to the rest of the sphere where there is no light directly hitting it. Okay, and I'm going to take my stomp and blend it in. You'll notice now that your stomp is a little bit dirty, it's actually really nice to shade with because it's got a little bit of pencil on it which helps you uh, with those light gray areas. Sometimes you don't even have to add more pencil to the paper. You can just kind of rub your stomp on it and get that perfect shade. If you want, you can even give your um, cast shadow area a little bit of a light shade. Just to remember that it's gonna be somewhat circular, okay? And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna darken our core shadow. So I'm gonna build it up by layering it up leaving a little bit of reflected light around the edge of the ball or the sphere here. Okay, and go back in with your stop. You, and you can really darken the shadow right underneath that sphere because it's going to be the darkest right underneath. Right, and then you can stretch it out with Thank you. 
okay? And if it gets really, really uh, messy, you can always take your eraser and just clean it up. Even the, the shadow on the floor, on the surface, you can kind of reshape it a bit with your eraser. And don't be afraid to go back in and darken those areas that should be really dark. It's going to take a lot of layering to make it look good. Okay, so I'm going to check these on Friday. Again, I'm looking for your ability to show me a variety of different values and using them in the right spot. Okay, and we can even go ahead and label these now. So we have uh, 3D forms, can be the title. Okay, we have here a cube. You have a cone. And a sphere. Okay, and then you can go ahead and point to the different areas and tell me where is the highlight, where is the mid-tone, where is the core shadow, where is the cast shadow, where is the reflected light on all three of them. Okay, and so when you're happy with them done blended, you're going to grab a fresh piece of paper, try these three again using hatching, and then again try cross-hatching. And you should not be rushing this stuff. You should be, like, how much time did it take us to do this? A half an hour? And that was pretty fast. Okay. Um... We worked through this pretty quickly, but it did take about half an hour altogether, about five to 10 minutes per piece. Okay, so don't rush them. You guys should be spending about um, four to six hours of studio time on your days working at home. Okay, so again, I want you to practice free handing forms until you feel like they look good. Okay, feel free to use up as many white sheets of paper. Just practice, practice, practice using lines and free handing forms. You can try the cone using the steps that I showed you. Your cone should have a nice rounded edge to it, not a flat edge to it. It shouldn't be a triangle, okay? And then when you're ready, do one page blended, one page hatched, and one page cross-hatched labeled, okay? And of course, you want to make sure that this is completed as well. You could do the stippling if you have a marker at home. And then the rest, you, you should have got the majority of done it in, in class, but you might have like the last two to finish up at home. And again, when you squint at it, I should see five distinctly different colors. Pardon this just interruption to class.